Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. Subscribe, like, and share. Welcome to this episode, Biblical Archaeology in the Land of Israel. The Illustrated London News, 1932. In the title of the article from the Illustrated London News is A New Ancestor of Man, Paleoanthropus of Palestine. Paleoanthropus, paleo meaning ancient. Anthropus, man, ancient man of Palestine, the Illustrated London News, July 9th, 1932, and Paleoanthropus of Palestine was found in the land of Israel, in the northern region, near the city of Haifa, in the area or region of Mount Carmel. Also, an image of Paleoanthropus man can be found in the book Sex and Race, Volume 3, by J.A. Rogers. On page 320, who is a Negro or Negroid prehistoric types? Left, Paleoanthropus, or Prehistoric Man of Palestine. The image was courtesy of Illustrated London News. J.A. Rogers, Sex and Race, Volume 3. With Charles Darwin looking down from a photo on the wall, a painting of the skull of Thotdown Man being examined by, in the back row, F. O. Barlow, G. Elliot Smith, Charles Dawson, and Arthur Smith Woodward. In the front row, A. S. Underwood. Arthur Keith, W.P. Pycraft, and Ray Langster. What is really interesting about this painting is that all these men and their disciplines, they took an interest in the theory of evolution by natural selection, which was the theory of Charles Darwin. They were Paleontologists, anthropologists, zoologists, archaeologists. And they're looking at a skull of Peltdown Man, which Charles Dawson said was the missing link between ape like ancestors and man, which proved to be a fraud. So this was the closest that the scientific community had any evidence, which proved to be no evidence at all. 
This was their chance to prove that the theory of evolution was true. And this Peltdown Man, or Missing Link, was a complete and absolute fraud. It was fake. There is no Missing Link. There was no Missing Link. And the man in the middle is Sir Arthur Keith. His discovery in the land of Israel helps disprove evolution and help prove the historical accuracy of the Bible, the Torah, the Tanakh, the records of the Hebrews. Let's begin by actually taking a look at what Arthur Keith discovered in the land of Palestine. In a New York Times article dated August 4th, 1932, Bones of Cannibals, a Palestine riddle, Negroid people of 5,000 BC. Unlike any modern race described by Arthur Keith, they ate bodies of enemies, men short of stature, and they burned bones of dead after burial in a London session heard this or London session hears. Teeth of woman drawn, linking relics or the skeletons that he discovered to burnt skeletons from Ur of the Chaldees. Scientists speculates on old cremation custom. Let's go into this article so we can properly understand what the title of this article was trying to explain to us. Bones of Cannibals, a Palestine riddle, it's a mystery. This article is from the New York Times, page 21. On the left is a skull of Paleoanthropus man. On the right is the actual reconstruction of the face of Paleoanthropus man or ancient man of Palestine. Negroid people of 5000 BC. Unlike any modern race described by Keith, eight bodies of enemies, men short of stature. Burnt bones of dead after burial. London session hears. Teeth of women drawn. Linking relics to burnt skeletons from Ur. Scientists speculate an old cremation custom. Seven or 8,000 years ago, in what geologists call modern times, a race of Negroid cannibals lived in Palestine, burnt the bones of their dead after burial, and devoured the bodies of their enemies. Skulls and thigh bones of this race were unearthed within the last four years, first at Shikba near Jerusalem, and later in caves at Mount Carmel. Because they puzzled the excavators who found them, they received the new name Natufians. Today the first authoritative account of them was given by Sir Arthur Keith to the Congress of Prehistoric and proto-historic sciences and showed them to be 
one of the greatest riddles of archaeology. There were clearly a Negroid people, said Sir Arthur, with wide faces, flat noses, and long, large heads. They were short of stature, five feet, three or four inches tall, and their thighs and legs were remarkably strong, while their arms and shoulders were weak. Alone among prehistoric peoples, they had a custom of extracting the two upper central incisor teeth of their women, jagged holes in the fronts of their skulls indicate that they ate human brains. Unlike any present race, they may have been ancestors or the Arabs or Semites of biblical times, in Sir Arthur's opinion. They had some facial characteristics like those of the Neolithic or late Stone Age men of Malta and the Ramota or Ignatian men of Southern Europe. But whatever the similarities, Sir Arthur declared, they lived between 5000 and 6000 BC and cannot be identified with any race on earth today. In addition to all these riddles, Sir Arthur propounded another linking them unaccountably to ancient Ur of the Chaldees and the prehistoric man of South Africa. From piles of charred and fragmented bones found in Palestine, mostly women's bones, Sir Arthur concluded they did not cremate their dead but burned them long after burial. By a strange coincidence, he said, at the time that the burnt remains came to me, Leonard Woolley sent me a box of human remains from under the foundations of Ur. These burnt bones from Ur of about the third dynasty also represented not ordinary cremation, cremation of dead bodies clothed with flesh but cremation of dried skeletons. In the remains from Ur, women's bones were preponderant. Two years ago, Miss Gertrude Canton Thompson sent me burnt bones from under the foundations of Zimbabwe in southern Rhodesia. Our nation men of Europe share the same facial features as ancient men of Palestine. Our nation men of Southern Europe. The facial characteristics of the ancient people of Palestine was compared to Neolithic people of Malta. Here's a Neolithic woman or a reconstruction of a Neolithic woman from England, which is a comparison. She was Neolithic. Royal Pavilion and Museum, Brighton. A facial reconstruction of White Hawk woman. A 5,600 year old Neolithic woman from Sussex. The reconstruction is on show at the Royal Pavilion and Museum in Brighton. These ancient people of Palestine with their facial structures were compared to Neolithic people of Malta or Europe. This is a reconstruction of a Neolithic woman from Europe or England. And once again, of European Neolithic woman, this is comparable to Neolithic people in general in Europe. 
This phase, according to the anthropologist Sir Arthur Keith, is the face in general of ancient people of Palestine, who could be the ancestor of Arabs or Semites of the Middle East. According to Arthur Keith, the organization men of Southern Europe share the same facial features with ancient men of Palestine. On this geographical ethnic map of Europe, or biblically, the land of Jephet, the image of a Jephetic man and a Jephetic woman is shown. Arthur Keith compared their facial features with the ancient man of Palestine. The woman in the middle of this photograph is Dorothy Garrod, British archaeologist. Let's continue on with the New York Times article. These represented the skulls of two women which have been burned long after the flesh had disappeared from them. Was there once a custom in ancient times of digging up the bones of ancestors and then subjecting them to an ordeal of fire? Boxes of charred bones from Palestine were on the table while Sir Arthur spoke, together with a dozen curiously shaped reddish skulls that stared across the lecture room. Scientists who listened were startled and bewildered. Miss Dorothy Garrod, British archaeologist who had found the remains while working for the British School of Archaeology in the American School of Prehistoric Studies, assured the audience that they were comparatively modern and they were of the Mesolithic period. Natufian remains, it should be remembered, are in no way connected with the more recent discoveries of a new race of fossil men also in caves near Mount Carmel. The fossil men, so remarkably different from all others yet found, became extinct in the remotely distant past. While the Natufians may still have been living when the first city-states of Samaria arose, Sir Arthur based his conclusions today on 20 comparatively complete skulls of 87 found by Miss Garrod. In this article, Dorothy Garrod made a statement. The fossil men or the new race of fossil men were extinct, the ones that were found in Mount Carmel, and that their remains were different than the Natufians. Later, I will show the data that proves that statement is incorrect. And the new race of fossil men and the Natufians were found buried together. They were the same people. Sites, features of race. Several features stand out quite definitely, he asserted. First, the Natufians were a long-headed people. They had cap-shaped occiputs, the lower back part of the head. Secondly, the dimensions or their heads were greater than in the pre-dynastic Egyptians. Thirdly, their faces were short and wide. Fourthly, they were prognatheous with projecting jaws. Fifthly, their nasal bones were not narrow and higher, but formed a wide, low arch. Sixthly, their chins were not prominent, but were maxed by the fullness of the teeth-bearing parts of the jaw. The Natufians at Chukba seem to have practiced cannibalism, for it is only by making this supposition that one can explain the cutting 
and fracturing of bones. The characters of the cuts and the broken surfaces show the bones were still in a flesh state when the damage was done. I believe the Shukba people ate human brains. Ritual cannibalism was a practice that evolved the worship of the dead or the worship of the ancestors. This is a Middle Eastern custom that spread across the world. This strange custom was indoctrinated inside the minds of the people after the flood. Anthropologists like Dorothy Gerard and Arthur Keith called the ancient people of Palestine and the Tufians the Shukba people. Let's get some more insight into who these Shukba people really was. In the book Camite Brotherhood, African Origins in Early Asia by James E. Brunson. Let's turn to page 37. 37 has a anthropological study on the anthropological aspect of the Shukba people. This is a more graphic image of page 37. It states where these people were located, Western Asia, the time period, Mesolithic period, area, Palestine, culture, Natufian, historical, archaeological, and their physical type. They're classified as Proto-Dravidinian or of a South Indian type, cultural type, Shukba people, scientific term, Mediterranean, Equatorial, Negro, Asteroid race. And on the top on the right is a Dravidinian man which would represent this type of human being physically. These people, the Shukba people, were not actually South Indians or Proto-Dravidinians. The scientific community listed these physical types as Proto-Dravidinian, South Indian. Negro asteroid race. Later, I'm going to actually pinpoint exactly where these people are today and who they were. They're historically a biblical nation that lived in Palestine before the Israelites moved into Palestine. Let's continue with the New York Times article. The cannibalism theory was strongly disputed by Professor Elliot Smith, eminent geologist, who said he was entirely skeptical of it. Also, Professor Smith said it was not uncommon in Egypt to find burned bones in graves, but it is a question of remarkable interest to know what these charred bones mean. He said, and if it should be shown that cutting teeth was in vogue, it will make us revise all our knowledge. For the earliest instance we know is in 300 BC. Professor Smith objected too that it was hardly possible that these people had had Negro blood. But Sir Arthur speedily corrected him. By the word Negroid, he meant merely Negro-like characteristics, such as are found throughout Europe and even in Scandinavia. Sir Arthur drew the inference that the Natufians 
had carried our Ghanaian culture into Palestine after the last glacial age, which was approximately 35,000 years ago. Now, this is an interesting conversation within the scientific community because it shows they did not always agree. Elliot Smith tried to correct Arthur Keith by his statement. These people had, had Negro blood was something that Smith objected to. You can't tell the public these people are Negroes or had Negro characteristics. But Arthur Keith stood his ground and basically said, not only was these people in ancient Palestine, Negroid, but also the ancient people of Europe and even Scandinavia was of a Negroid type. 